These are four living room colors that are out. People aren't really using them anymore, but don't worry, I got some great alternatives that you should hopefully enjoy. Welcome back to the channel. I'm James from The Paint People, and this is a video all about living room colors. We recently talked about some living room design trends that have been circulating on the internet, but today we're gonna focus solely on paint colors. And these colors are not necessarily ones that you just shouldn't use, but just not being used as often. So if any of these colors that are are not really popular anymore are still popular with you specifically that's all that should really matter but for everyone else that sort of wants to put their finger on the pulse of the interior design world I got you covered so if you're as excited as me then let's go ahead and start this video also click that like button so YouTube knows we're doing a pretty good job with these six painting and decorating videos every single week. So we got four broad color categories. I'm going to be using Sherwin-Williams today as an example, so I can give you actual paint colors that you can cling on to and compare. So the first color category that we need to talk about is gray. This is a bit of a fall from grace because gray has been great. Listen, stop it, get some help. For so many years, for 10, 15, 20 years, at being a really reliable, versatile paint color. By nature, it's neutral. It's not too saturated most of the time. It doesn't have a strong color hue that could potentially clash with other colors that might be in your space. It's sort of a no-nonsense color choice that worked for a lot of people. I recommended countless number of grays, including a color called Repose Gray by Sherwin-Williams. One of the most popular colors ever. I would say. And for good reason, like I said, it's a nice balanced gray, I feel, where it doesn't go too far into grayish category that is kind of creamy and beigey. It sort of stays true to its roots as being an earthy, grounded gray. The problem is, we don't really want earthy, grounded, plain, grayscale colors anymore. We want color. We want warmth. We want to feel cozy. We're spending more time at home, so we don't want to feel like we're in a big cinder block. And that's sort of what this color can give you. Not to say that it can't be dressed up or just look nice on its own, but what I would recommend instead of gray is taupe. And this is a very subtle shift. It's essentially taking a base of gray and then adding brown on top. And one that I really like by Sherwin-Williams is called Threshold Taupe. This is a color that's a little bit deeper than Repose Gray. It's a little closer to dark color territory rather than mid-tone. And maybe you would use it in slightly different areas. It's still fairly neutral. It's a bit muted, but it has a really plain color that you can see in it, which is brown. And I think because of that added warmth, even though it is darker, it won't necessarily come across that way in a lot of situations because the warmth just makes it feel a bit more cozy and open and accepting, I feel. It doesn't have that cold aesthetic that Repose Gray can sometimes have. And it's also going to work a lot better with the popular colors that are starting to come out in these last year, which is, you know, your terracottas, your reds, even your organic greens are still a really, really popular thing. By going with something more brown leaning rather than straight up gray, it opens up the possibilities for those creams, those beiges, sandy colors. It just gives you way more options, especially on the warmer side of things, which we're liking a lot recently. Grays are out, taupes are coming in. Next up we have white. Say what you will about, you know, your all white kitchens being a bit, you know, dated and all that. I think white is pretty timeless. I'm not gonna lie, but it is kind of boring, especially when you're looking at a really bright, stark, pure white, like High Reflective White by Sherwin-Williams. The Chantilly Lace of this company. So this is essentially their brightest, possible white you can get in their entire collection. And that's sort of my problem with it. Because it's the brightest, people will automatically just gravitate towards it because they think they want the starkest, brightest white, rather than handpicking an off-white, perhaps, that would work even better with their space. An off-white like Snowbound. I love Snowbound. It is kind of a unique off-white. It has a softness to it. It has a little bit of gray. It feels a bit cool, but it's not blue leaning in the slightest. It almost has a very, very light taupe aesthetic. See the connection there? So it will work with those warmer neutrals that you maybe want to use or at least base your color schemes off of. It's also not going to be overly creamy and warm, which is nice too because there's plenty of those colors out there. There's plenty of off-whites you can pick that have that yellow undertone. Snowbound doesn't have it. It's sort of an anomaly. It sits in its own little sweet spot. And its LRV or its light reflectance value is 10 points darker than high reflective white. And this may sound bad for some of you that want a bright white, 
But what I like about it is it gives you a little more usability in my mind, because now you have a color that is light enough to be used on your trim and your doors and all that, even your ceilings, but it has enough depth where it's not going to be too blinding that you can't use it on walls and the larger surfaces of your home. So that's why I like it. Off-white rather than pure stark white. This next one pains me a little bit because I do like this color. <laughs> it's Dusty Rose, specifically a color like Rose by Sherwin-Williams. Beautiful color, but in practical use in a home, it can be a bit one note, I feel. And a big reason for that is the heavy use of magenta and almost a cool purple undertone that sort of cements it in this one direction. It can be a little glam. It can be a little Barbie core, as some people describe it. It also just could seem like a kind of a dirty pink which maybe isn't ideal. I do get the pull towards it. I think the color on its own is really rich and beautiful, but when you're putting it on your walls, I think a slightly better direction is to warm things up a bit, which is a common theme in this video. And you can go for something like persimmon, which is a orange color, but it's more of a sandy brown based orange. It presents a lovely amount of color saturation, which I think is kind of the goal here. You're going from a, a deep pink to a little more of a fiery terracotta orange, but because it also feels a bit closer to brown, it will coordinate much nicer with neutral. It'll still stand out, but it can sit amongst other browns, taupes, things of that nature. And you also have a lot of the reds coming out too. So it is part of that family. It does seem to be a bit more current in my mind. Still an accent color. It's not something that I would paint my hallway with, which is sort of the litmus test for me. But for anyone that wanted sort of that dusty rose color, maybe go for something a little more orange leaning, maybe a little more fiery, a dash of a Morocco sort of aesthetic. So trade in your dusty rose for some dusty fiery clay. Next up we have bluey green. And this is a interesting one because I do like bluey greens and those types of colors, especially within coastal color palettes, but that's part of the problem for me. I feel like you are limited going into a coastal direction when you use more blue leaning colors like Tidewater, for example, by Sherwin-Williams. Great color, very reflective of the sea and the coast. So it should be fine within that framework, but it is something we have seen quite a bit. So I would perhaps go for something a bit darker, a little more saturated and a bit more green leaning. So instead of going with a greeny blue, go with a bluey green in Restful. But this color has a lot more green than blue, but it does have that sort of minty fresh undertone to it. And that makes it a little more energetic and interesting to me. It's also a darker color. So it's gonna be a little more of an accent choice rather than something that you can maybe paint your, you know, your family room with, for example. It's one of those conversation starters. As soon as your guests see this color, they'll be like, ooh, that's interesting. <laughs> Whether they love it or hate it. I don't know, but it will be noticed. So that's my takeaway. It's a little more purposeful. It's a little deeper, darker. You're going for those rich colors. It has more green as well, which will incorporate a little easier with any warmer tones that you use throughout your home, whether it's your neutrals, your fiery accent colors, all that. Now, if that color is a bit too saturated for you, you want something a little more understated within the same sort of realm, then you gotta check out our video on sea salt. This is another color that contains a little bit of green, a little bit of blue, a bit of gray, but it's much lighter and easier to use. Subscribe for our six videos a week and also become a channel member by joining us, clicking that button for us, supporting us. We love you.